Good morning, St. Thomas United Church and Foothills United Church. Welcome to our January 10th worship service. The first thing that we do here at St. Thomas is we acknowledge that we are on Treaty 7 territory. It is the traditional territory of the Kainai, the Pekane, the Siksika, the Stony Nakoda, and the Tsutsina Nations. And also we include in that acknowledgement the Region 3 Métis Nation. In acknowledging this land, we call ourselves to live with respect in creation and in right relationships with all its peoples. We understand that this means structural and personal change, as uncomfortable as that might seem. We acknowledge that. The second thing that we do here at St. Thomas is we light our Christ candle. And so we light our Christ candle specifically to have some kind of tangible and physical way of acknowledging the presence of the divine within our midst. And we also uh, say that we're gonna, um, the light is meant to illuminate the darkness and the darkest of times. And so today with all the happenings that have happened in this past week uh, and acknowledging that we are actually taping on a Thursday morning, the day after all the chaos that happened in the States yesterday, uh, we are just gonna take a little bit longer to light this Christ candle and to reflect and to really think about all those things that, that um, are creating this chaos. And, and being very mindful of all the injustices that, are, that we saw unfold yesterday. And, um, and being mindful that we have our Southern siblings in our hearts and our prayers. Let us light the Christ candle. Amen. So as we begin our worship together, this is a Sunday of uh, Jesus' baptism. So it is something to celebrate. It is something to, um, to lift up and to, to be excited about. And so uh, let us join together in our intro, number vo Voices United, number 87. I am the light of the world, and you at home should be clapping at the appropriate times. <laughs> Have fun. Join us in our call to worship, your part is in yellow. Through the waters of baptism, we see grace poured out. Through words of blessing spoken, we hear of love enlivened. And through the stories of old, we hear of faith alive in our world once more. Amen. Please join with me as we say our opening prayer together. Let us pray. Holy God of the waters above and the waters below, we gather in your presence to feel once more the healing powers of your love wash over us. As we gather in your name, remind us of your power to cleanse, forgive, speak, reveal, wash, water, baptize, and create new life once more. Amen. 
Please join us as we sing Voices United number 99, Christ, when for us you were baptized. Let us sing together. Christ, when for us you were baptized, God's Spirit on you came, as peaceful as a dove and yet as urgent as a flame. God called you my beloved Son, called you my servant true, sent you God's kingdom to proclaim God's holy Straightway and steadfast until death, you then obeyed the call. Free me as Son of Man to serve and give your life for all. Baptize us with your Spirit now, your cross on us is signed. And likewise in God's service we may perfect freedom. Today's scripture reading is Mark 1, verses 4 to 11. And so John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to John and were baptized by him in the Jordan River as they confessed their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist, and he ate nothing but grasshoppers and wild honey. In the course of his preaching, John said, One more powerful than I is to come after me. I am not fit to stoop and untie his sandal straps. I have baptized you in water, but the one to come will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. It was then that Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan River by John. Immediately upon coming out of the water, Jesus saw the heavens opening and the spirit descending on him like a dove. Then a voice came from the heavens, you are my beloved, my own, on you my favor rests. This is the witness of the church. Thanks be to God. Let the story begin. church we often talk about baptism as the beginning. Often we think about it as the beginning of people's life of faith or the beginning of people's relationship with a particular church or a particular denomination. This morning the baptism of Jesus is similar in that it marks the beginning of Jesus's public ministry. 
in the Gospel of Mark, the baptism is literally the beginning of the story of Jesus. Before this morning's scripture, we only hear a short introduction of John the baptizer, likening him to the prophet Isaiah from the Hebrew scriptures. John, who has only just begun to catch people's attention, is the one that would come to prepare the way and make straight the paths as the voice calling out from the wilderness. But even as John begins the story of Jesus, he speaks of the one that is coming after him, that will be even greater than he, one that will bring about a change of faith and a change to the way that God is understood in people's lives. Jesus' baptism is where the gospel story really begins. And the people gathered begin to see that this person, Jesus, is that someone greater. It is the coming out party for Jesus where the heavens are opened up and a voice calls out, You are my beloved, my own, on you my favor rests. Yet as much as this moment in time of Jesus being baptized is the beginning of the gospel story, and that beginning of Jesus' recorded ministry in Mark, it is not the beginning of the story of God or God's people. Even as John the baptizer calls people out to be baptized in the waters of the Jordan, John is not the first one to think up or begin the practice of baptism. Baptism itself was taking place long before John's call of repentance and the forgiveness of sin in the wilderness. The Jewish laws, which had been passed down from generation to generation, had several things to say about the need for ritual washing, as well as the most effective places for it to take place. Of all the options listed for these ritual immersions, there was a clear preference for the living waters found only in large natural bodies of water. Those places that were alive with God's creation in which people would be cleansed, made whole, and made ready for temple service. This was not a one and done process of initiation, but rather an intentional moment of cleansing and community, of renewal that was to be repeated whenever required. Baptism itself has a history that dates back before the beginning of either John or Jesus' ministry. And even the words around those living waters has a history that dates back well before Christianity. Even as we look at the beginning of the gospel story in Mark, in which Jesus is made known to the people and begins his ministry, it isn't the beginning at all. But the same is true for baptism as a whole, and for each of us in our lives. Regardless of when we are or have been baptized, it's not the beginning in the sense that that there exists nothing before this particular moment. Our lives exist, our faith exists, before those moments of water and prayer. Just as God exists in the world before Jesus is immersed and the heavens are opened up. But there is something that happens at baptism, in that moment of intention and recognition that we take note of and lift up as important to us and to the church. Baptism is a part of who we are as a people of faith. It is an important part of who we are as a family and as a community. I've heard countless stories of how important baptism has been for individuals who were baptized later in life, who remember their baptism, or, or of who had their, their children baptized. I remember working with a youth who told me about how they themselves 
asked their parent to be baptized at the age of 10. And what an, an immense experience that was like for her. Baptism is one of our two sacraments in the United Church, right up there with importance with communion. And while we rationalize and theologize that the reason we hold these two rituals up in particular is because Jesus himself took part in both baptism and communion. But it's also important to note that these things happened in community. Jesus does not go to John in the River Jordan asking all those gathered to leave so that he might be baptized in secret or in isolation. He gathers with the crowds, with those closest to him to be a part of it. It is the gathered community who bear witness to the sky being opened up to hear the heavens declare that this is the beloved. Just as Jesus gathers once again those closest to him in the breaking of the bread and in the sharing of the cup. There is something special that happens because it takes place in and as community. Author and theologian N.T. Wright says, The primary point of baptism then is not so much that it does something to the individual, but that it defines the community. The mix of both individual and community, both joined together in the mystery and the moment of baptism. For me, baptism isn't about salvation, forgiveness, or even initiation by some particular process. It is not the beginning of a life of faith where before there was nothing of note. It is about recognizing the divine in each one of us, in each other, and in each moment before and to come. Baptism is about gathering at the river, as the old hymn goes, whether that is in person or through the help of technology. To those gathered with the saints that have gone before and, and welcomed those that will come after us as a baptized and baptizing community. In the name and in the example of Jesus the Christ, the beloved in whom we are all a part of. Baptism is not a beginning or an end, but a pivotal moment of grace on the journey. Baptism is not about cleansing, but rather a moment in time for deep and meaningful reflection and maybe change. This is not a turning away from what was, as much as it is a renewal with intention of that which always has been. This is about being lifted up in that moment for all to see, an ushering in of a new era. In this way, baptism is like turning the page from one year to the next, from what was to what will be. It is not a process of wiping the slate clean and blank so as to ignore all that has come before, but rather a moment to renew and refresh what might be, to turn with intention, to recognize and remember the divine in our midst, not the beginning of God's presence, but a moment to draw attention to it. I've heard a lot lately about getting rid and good riddance to 2020, and I agree, there is a lot about this past year that we would do well to move away from for this next year. But we cannot do this by simply ignoring or erasing the experiences and the lessons of this past year. 2021 will only be different if we use this past year to inform and recreate this next one. And maybe we do need to wash away a few things from this past year. Refresh and renew, turn over a new leaf and create something better. And maybe even cry out 
from the wilderness, a baptism of repentance and forgiveness like John. But that's only possible if we act together as community. We cannot simply wish or hope for a better year. We need to work to create it, especially when we continue to hear so many instances of violence and unrest, both here and around the world. The baptism of Jesus is a reminder that all can be made new. And with each moment, we have the potential to be a new creation. But this does not happen overnight or with a simple turning of the calendar page. It is an intentional process that we are each responsible for in our own lives, in our own communities, and as a part of the world around us. 2021 will certainly be a better year than this past one was. But that will not happen without each of us doing what we can to create that better year. As we remember the baptism of Jesus, the heavens opening up and declaring the belovedness of Jesus and the ministry to which he would work to create. May we hear that same echo of belovedness in our lives with the call to create a world and a year from that which was, using the trials and the challenges to create a community and a world that will continue to echo the blessings and belovedness that we have before us and that we hear in our stories of God with us. I truly hope that 2021, this new year before us, will be better than the last. But I also hope that we do not forget all that we have experienced in 2020. The moments of challenge and the moments of hope. And that we use those moments to create a new year that is better than the last in our lives and in the lives of those we love, and in the lives of all those around us, now and always. Amen. recognize and give thanks for all those that contribute and make possible what we do here in both St. Thomas United Church and Foothills United Church. We give thanks for time, the talent, and the treasure, all of those things and energies that make who we are in the world such a powerful witness of life in faith. We give thanks for all those that uh, continue to mail in checks to uh, the offices as well as those who participate in our pre-authorized remittance program. If you'd like any more information, please be in touch with our offices. Let us pray as we gather these and all things before God. Let us pray. Holy One, as we pour out our gifts, we remember all the ways you have poured out your love in our lives. 
We remember your words of affirmation spoken on the shore of the River Jordan and hear your words of blessing in our lives. Help us to respond through word and action, the ancient call of work and witness, mission and ministry, through the example of your Son, the Beloved. Amen. Let us gather our hearts now in a time of prayer as we sing more voices, number seven, gather us in. Let us sing together. join together in prayer. Loving one, through the sacrament of baptism, you remind us that your spirit moves and works in this world, and that we are invited to participate in your work of creating and recreating through this community. Loving one, give us the courage to accept your invitation to journey not only into the moments of celebrations of faith, but also into the wilderness moments. Let us take courage through our communities of faith and the clouds of witnesses that came before us that we are part of this faith tradition that calls us to be your voice of love in the world. Loving one, remind us of your waters of baptism, waters that refresh and help us to refocus our intentions on who we are meant to be in your image. Water which connects us to one another, to the Christ we profess our faith in, and the loving God who hovered over the waters of creation. God, it can be tempting to wash our hands of the concerns of this world, to cloister within our walls of faith and take comfort in our com common understandings and rituals. But you have called us to be a part of your world, to engage with the painful moments along with the joys and celebrations to be a voice of comfort and peace. We are called to act as agents of change, to be companions and allies of those who are marginalized and discriminated, and to care deeply for all your people and your creation. God, let this morning's scripture, the reminder of the waters of baptism wash over us. Like the gentle water lapping at the water's edge, let it comfort. And like the crashing waves that enliven and that enliven and invigorate. God, let these refreshing waters refocus us on you, your world, and our place in it. Loving one, be with us as we lift up the prayers of your people and your community. In this time, we pray for those on our hearts and in our minds. This morning, we lift up to you our neighbors in the States thinking of the political turmoil and unrest of this past week. We pray that the people of the United States can navigate through this time without fear and hatred that resulted in the loss of life this week. We ask you to be with all people, that your spirit may move through the lives of all people towards acts of peace and love. We pray for the peaceful transition of power. At this time, let us lift up in the silence of our hearts those individuals and circumstances that are weighing on us this morning.
Loving one, we gather these in all our prayers, spoken aloud and held in the silence of our hearts as we continue praying by singing together the Lord's Prayer. Join us in our commissioning, your part is in yellow. By what we have remembered this day, may we be inspired for tomorrow. By the community we are a continued part of, may we be supported for the future. And by the faith we live, may we be an inspiration to the world. Amen. As we prepare to depart this time of worship, may we go as God's people, as the people called to make a difference in this new year that is before us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in Christ's name, and as Christ's people. Amen. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Come on, brothers, let's go down, 
down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, fathers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, mothers, let's go down. Come on down, don't you want to go down? Come on, mothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sinners, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me.